What to do, DeFi Rebels? Air here back for a market update. Not gonna go live today, but I'm gonna get you a market update. We are getting close to the bottom of the range. It might be time to start thinking about some spot plays. If we can hold the bottom of this range, we are seeing some bid support come in below us. We are seeing a little bit of light volume right now. So unless things pick up and we see some heavy sell side pressure to the downside, we should hold or bounce at this range low, which in that case, you know, the expectation is we get a bounce off of that. Currently in a Bitcoin short, it's about a million dollar play right there, up about uh, 32 grand, about 60%. Writing was on the wall we talked about during yesterday's live stream and in Discord all day long. Make sure you hop on in, you're not missing out. Discord.gg slash DeFi Rebels. Premium Discord is where all the magic happens, DeFiRebels.com. Let's just go ahead and get into the video. So as we come down to the bottom of the range here, the expectation, just like all the previous times, all these wicks down here is that we bounce up. Does that mean that we have to? No, we're going to need to look at the market, analyze sentiment and see what happens when we get down there. But the expectation for at least now is that we bounce. And look, if this cycle is any different than the last couple of cycles, you know, between 100 and 150 days after having is where the market picks up. So a few months of chop, a little bit of summer lull is normal. We got the 2020 having and the 2016 having right here. And you can see it's playing out very similarly. The summer lulls are playing out very similarly. Here's last summer. Here is the summer before that, 2022. Here is the summer before that. So we've had some big corrections in the summers and some sideways chop like last summer. And look, from a fundamental standpoint, it makes sense. The miners are making half as much right now than they were just a few weeks ago. Miners, in essence, spend electricity to validate the network. They have other expenses to keep up with, payroll, hardware, software, all the expenses that come with running mining. And yes, fees have increased over the past couple of years, thanks to the popularity of ordinals, inscriptions, now runes, BRC20 tokens. Fees are rising, transactions are going up, thanks to those. They still only account for about 10% of the total block reward. What does that mean for miners? They still need to pay and sell Bitcoin to keep the lights on. And look, it's still profitable, at least for most miners. There is still evidence that a fee-based marketplace is still sustainable, but we can see, here's a chart. This is the USD price of Bitcoin versus the USD value of the block reward plus fees. And we can see that when fees rise, so does the price of Bitcoin in most cases. I mean, look at this fee spike with the halving here. So in my opinion, once we see fees start to kind of pick up again, that is just like a market sentiment shift. We'll see the true value of Bitcoin rise again. So what happens next? The same thing, expectationally, that's happened after the previous two halvings and after the summer lull, where we get a little bit of sideways chop, we let the dust settle, and then the demand outweighs the supply. The curve starts to change usually at about 100 days after the halving, towards the end of summer. We're still bullish, babies. We still have more institutional adoption coming constantly. We just had the ETFs. There's talk of ETH ETFs. The Hong Kong ETFs just got launched. At the end of the day, there are more bullish narratives right now than we've ever had in Bitcoin and crypto as a whole. Like I've been saying since the summer chop started, your only goal right now is to preserve capital, make smarter plays so you have money, come the end of summer, about 100 days or so after having. Take advantage of this study, buy the bottoms of the ranges, and set yourself up for success come August, September. Stick around, be involved. Your only job right now, just like it was in the bear market, was to stick around. And this is going to be no different. We're going to have a chop phase, a consolidation phase, and then the markup or the momentum phase. And we are still in phase one. This phase can last longer than your leverage account can stay solvent. I promise you. So take smarter plays, be less risky, and really know what you're doing. Use this time to learn how to trade sideways chops. Doesn't I mean you have to trade. Use less leverage, use less money, and take this as an opportunity to learn. Interest is dropping right now. Like I said, summer lull on YouTube. The searches are down. I and mean, we have like a little insider insight into that ourselves. Our views are down. Our subscriber count is down right now. And it is all across crypto YouTube. Not to mention Google searches right now are falling as well. The calls to buy the dip have fallen considerably. And those maintaining that crypto is in a bull cycle 
have become even more silent right now. Almost 10 weeks of sideways chop. Granted, it's a big range, but it still is a consolidation or a sideways chop. It's still phase one. Even the ETFs spot volume are slowing down. We're actually seeing net outflows right now for the first time since launch. Seems like the markets, the market makers, these institutions have just kind of agreed on this is what it is. This is what it's been in the past. Let's get through this summer. Let's chop it up and move on into this, you know, the fall and uh, in winter. Even the Nasdaq's in some chop slash decline. The stock markets are kind of feeling the same thing. So what do we do? Well, we trade the ranges. We figure out the macro top, the macro bottom, the ranges within the range, and we trade them. If you're looking to pick up spot, the hope is that we hold the bottom of this range like we have the entire time. If not, we're probably looking to come down to the next range's top and bottom down here at about 52.5 ish or 55. And learn, watch price action, watch how we react at these levels, back test, practice, watch how price action reacts so the next time we get into a phase like this, you are ready for it. Every single time we have an impulse to the downside or the upside, figure out what happened. What did the indicators say? What was volume doing? Were there divergences? Was there signs there so we can help predict future moves up or down. That's what I always tell people in Discord, in my training videos. And we have a whole training library in Discord, by the way, that I've started to toss a bunch more videos into talking about CVDs, planning, trading tips, tricks. But the best thing you can do is anytime we get an impulsive move up or down is to figure out why. What were the indicators doing? What were the warning signs beforehand so we can spot them in the future? Talked about this flag flag is starting to break down now. It's a potential. There is some, some potential here for us to make a measured move. We could be looking at coming down and closing out this lonely wick, or we could have that larger impulsive move. This is others market cap. So this is a total market cap of all crypto minus the top 10 coins, all coins. So we could come down to this, you know, towards the bottom of the next range. So if Bitcoin starts to lose or come down, we're going to see alt bleed even more. Now we are testing support right now on altcoins. Hopefully it holds. If it doesn't, I think we're going to get pretty bloody. Might be some DA, DCA opportunities here on some of these altcoins, but we have lost this morning, early this morning during the Asia trading hours, this trend line, this major trend line going all the way back to Friday, the 12th of April, started to lose it. So the first breakout target, 223 billion market cap, next one, 178. And really, we're probably targeting, you know, 178, I would say. So bottom of this range, maybe the top of this range at 170. Just a quick look at the Bitcoin order books right now. We can see from about 6,100 down to about 59,400, which is kind of this block here. There is some good support levels. I mean, we can't crash right through them, but there is some hope here. And really that 60K level right now is the thickest on the order book. So the hope is that we bounce there we see the volume turn around we see the bids step up and hopefully we can get into some alt plays and even if they're short term even if we only go up a couple thousand dollars on bitcoin that's still a potential for 20 percent, 30 percent, 40 percent on certain altcoins some short-term spot plays are a potential right now as we come towards the bottom of the range we have to watch the bottom of the range because we could crash right through it because we still are kind of looking at a potential leg down you got to remember during all the last previous cycles, we did slant down. And right now we're slant, we're just sideways. So that's what I'm watching today. Uh, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking 60K level, look for potential spot plays. But also in the back of back of my mind, I'm thinking we could go lower. So I want to see some intent to go up off that 60K level. Still in my long here, up about 60%, 33K. Not bad. Learn how to short guys, especially in a downward market trade the trend as we're trending down, you should be mostly looking for shorts. Doesn't mean you can't take longs or scalp, but we're trading the trend. We're trading in the direction of the market. When we're making lower lows and lower highs, we want to be looking for shorts to ride it down. We want to be in those big, longer time frame plays. That's it for this video. Quick kind of macro update on Bitcoin, a quick look at the altcoin total market cap. If you want to see specific coins TA'd, hop in Discord, discord.gg slash DeFi Rebels. Hop on in, start chatting with us. I'll be more than happy to throw out some charts for you guys. Otherwise, I'll see you over in Discord. Have a good day, happy trading, and be safe out there.